How y'all doing? I'm going to talk to you today about Bishop Derek Favors from Dallas, Texas. He was the bishop of a full gospel church in Dallas, Texas. The subtitle of this video is What is Wrong with the Pastors? Now, I'm sure, you know, lately, you know, we always see pastors fall. We always see pastors die. Uh, and there has to be lessons to be learned from this. There should be lessons to be learned from this. If we don't learn anything else, we are to learn God's not playing. And God does not play with sin. And we ought to stop playing with sin. Okay? Now, he died in a mysterious and controversial manner at age 42. He died uh, December... The, no, he was found December the 13th. 2017 he was found dead now this information comes from the internet i am not gossiping because i don't gossip uh this information comes from the internet i did not do any kind of cd interviews with anybody okay he was found dead in his hotel room because of some type of drug intoxication but naked okay now Whoever the men he was with uh, did not call an ambulance. We don't know whether he died. They say he checked into the hotel Monday, December the 11th, and he was found December the 13th. So he could have died uh, any one of those days. He could have been dead three days already when they found him. He could have died December 11th, 12th, or 13th. We don't know. Now, whoever the men he was with at that time did not call the ambulance. They just left. They left him dead on the floor. Now, uh, he could have been, if they had called an ambulance, he could have been resuscitated um, at some point. He could have been. But we don't really know how many days he was dead. He could have been dead. He could have been in, the, in that position three to four days. But like I said, if they had called the ambulance, he may have had not, when it happened, when he collapsed, um, there may have been that opportunity to uh, resuscitate him. But let's dissect what happened. He goes for a weekend or a weekday excursion. You know, he checks in Monday, December the 11th, and they find him dead December the 13th. And the clerk said he often came to that hotel on a weekend or for three or four days at a time with a group of men. So, and the only reason why they found him December the 13th is because his wife called him. He called the hotel to see how he was doing. Okay. Because his wife knew he was there. He had been going on these homosexual drug and he'd been having, let me put it this way, he'd been having drug-induced homosexual orgies for a while. His wife knew about it. Probably some of his older children knew about it. And she went along with it. He's going to be gone for three or four days. She went along with it. Okay. So about three days, he did not call. So that's, she called the well checkup, but I guess eventually the police came. But she knew he was there. Okay. And, th and then the police came, come and they found him. Now the clerk, like I said, the clerk at the hotel said he came to the hotel often with a few men and stayed three to four days. They had a homo, a drug induced homosexual orgy for days at a time and like I said his wife knew it and probably some of his older children knew it they knew he was going to be gone for three or four days she went along with the sin now this pastor he was a pastor he was he was elevated to a bishop they said he'd been preaching at that church since he was 19 he's gay he was gay he was homosexual or you want to use the word homosexual He's given to 
homosexual drug induced orgies. Now, I do not know how long he's been doing this. Only he knows and probably his wife knows. Okay, but what is the issue there? He had a double life. The whole concept of duality. The whole concept of being two people. Okay. Now, they both went along with the sin. He went along with the sin. Bishop Favors and his wife went along with the sin. They both did. Okay. Now, at some point, God rebuked him. Now, I don't know how many times God rebuked him, but at some point, God rebuked him. Because he gave a sermon about power. He said, you need power to get off of drugs. Power to stop doing this and stop doing that. But he didn't use the power on himself to get free from homosexuality, to get free from drugs, adultery, etc. Now, at some point, another point, God told him he was going to die and go to hell. Because he had a sermon and he said, I'm not going to hell. God had already told him, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. And so he has a sermon. He says, I'm not going to hell. So then there came a day of reckoning, payday. He died from, from, from all that, buck naked on the hotel floor, undignified. Now, he was not, if you go, by him doing that, he was not spending time with his wife. He was not spending time with his children. Uh, he was not taking care of church business because there's a lot of business in the church. You got to pay bills, do this and do that, etc. Um, is he in hell? That's not for me to say. But, you know, God already told him he was going to die. And God already told him he was going to die and go to hell. And instead of repenting in dust and ashes, what did he do? He sinned one more time. He played with God one more time. He did not, he continued his sin one more time to see if he could get away with it one more time. Because God didn't kill him a few times. Let's see what happened this time. Let's see what God's going to do this time. Now, there's a, you, you take like these type of addictions that people have, whether it's homosexuality, drugs, if you have an adulterous affair, an adulterous affair it becomes an addiction, whether it's a heterosexual type or a homosexual type. It becomes an addiction. You got to have this person. Okay. So we don't want to put that on the altar. Now, see, there has to be something to learn from all of this. Zachary Timms. Now, his wife said he had adulterous affairs plural at some point god rebuked him too he said you're gonna die and it says zachary repenting in dust and ashes and getting rid of those drugs and repenting towards his wife what did he do he tried it one more time he tried cocaine one more time and it stopped his heart now his adulterous affairs plural <laughs> was probably with a whole lot of ugly women <laughs> okay anyway <laughs> So, and then there's another pastor that admitted to a cocaine habit. Now, he said he put he put a needle in his big toe. Now, the big the, the vein in the big toe goes straight from the big toe to the heart, straight. I'm surprised he lived to tell about it because that vein that is in the big toe, it's a it's a main vein. It goes straight from the big toe to the thighs, right up to the heart. I'm just surprised he lived to tell about it. I'm surprised he's still living to tell him about it. But he said he would shoot cocaine, drugs in his big toe, and then go preach. And I, like I said, I'm just surprised he lived to tell, even tell that story. Um, now, one thing about it, if Satan wants to kill the pastors, which is what he wants to do, if he wants to destroy the pastors, in my opinion, there are about four ways he does it. Adultery. Heterosexual or homosexual, money, stealing money from the church, 
born against the church to will and deal, pay for their businesses, stealing money from the congregation, for people in the congregation. Um, and these are why a lot of pastors end up in hell. Okay, uh, drugs, alcohol issues, mental issues, uh, philo philosophy, is philosophical issues. You know, some pastors don't believe the word. They say, well, the word is just tall tales. Um, they don't believe in the devil. They don't believe in the hell. So that's actually five. Some pastors have committed suicide. I read another word where, where pastor was involved in the prostitution ring. What is wrong with the pastors? I'm going to tell you one thing that's wrong is that they're playing with God and they're playing with sin. Well, because God did not kill them immediately because the God doesn't kill. You know, because God had mercy on them and didn't let the devil kill them immediately, they use that as an occasion to sin again. So that's what they do. They go to a prostitute again. Jimmy Swagger, what I read on the internet is that he even said that every time he held a revival, he would go visit the prostitutes in Louisiana. He did that for 30 years. That's what he said. He's That's what is he's alleged to have said to the Assemblies of God. Now, I don't know what to do about it. Okay, all I, I know is that, number one, we got to keep our body under subjection. We cannot trust ourselves. I'm not going to sit here and tell a preacher, don't do this, don't do that. But you know what? I would say don't play with God. I would say don't play with sin and don't play with God. I would say that to preachers. Some preachers call themselves to preach. Uh, some people, some preachers just aren't ready to be preachers. Some preachers aren't fit to be preachers. Uh, some preachers need to take a sabbatical. Okay. But you know what? He checked in, Bishop Derek Favors checked in at, at, um, December 11th, which is a Monday, and he was found on December 13th. He could have died on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. I don't know. Very mysterious. Have a nice day.